Okay, now I'd like to spend a little time with you talking about sensitive areas and susceptible crops. Uh, they're totally different. Uh, a lot of people get them confused and they talk about setbacks and buffers, but there are totally different areas and we need to focus on one at a time. The sensitive areas is an EPA mandated uh, requirement. It has to do with the Endangered Species Act of the early 1970s. So if you have an area, and some examples are on the, on the board here, but some examples of sensitive areas would be like a wooded area, a grassy area, CRP, a wetland, anything like that. The definition of a sensitive area via the EPA is an area that does or could harbor an endangered species. So if there's an endangered plant or an insect or a mammal or bird, if that area could have an endangered species, it's considered a sensitive area. So the rules on sensitive areas is if the wind is blowing towards it, we need a 30 foot buffer. So we got a 30 foot downwind buffer. If the wind is blowing away from a sensitive area, you can spray right to the edge with the enlist herbicides. So it just has to do with endangered species. If you, if you compare it with dicamba, they have a 110 foot downwind buffer and we have a 30 foot downwind buffer. So now let's compare that with susceptible crops, susceptible plants. When we're talking about a plant that's susceptible, and we with Enlist, with Enlist 2 and Enlist 1, there are some crops that are susceptible. So if they are downwind, we do not want to be spraying. We want to wait till the wind is blowing away from them. So we have a few examples here. Uh, when you're talking uh, down south, you're talking about cotton without the Enlist trait is a susceptible plant. Uh, some of the other key ones would be vineyards, uh, where there's grapes. Uh, you got the uh, uh, fruiting vegetables would be tomatoes and eggplant and peppers. You also have curcubits, and that would be examples would be squash, pumpkin, watermelon, cantaloupe, cucumbers, anything like that. Those are considered susceptible plants. So if I'm spraying here and you've got a north wind blowing south, if I can see a field of a susceptible crop, let's say there's a vineyard there, and if it's downwind where I'm standing in the field, I can see the field, it could be a half, quarter mile down there, um, then I'm not gonna spray that day if the wind's blowing towards it. I will just wait till a different day till the wind's blowing away. And then you need a field separation when you're blowing when it's downwind, or when it's upwind. So you just stay away from it if the wind's blowing towards it, wait till the wind's blowing the opposite direction. Now there's a couple crops which are considered susceptible to dicamba, but they are not susceptible to enlist. And one of the key ones would be soybeans. The other, the other key one that's different than dicamba is alfalfa. So in a lot of part of the country, you have other soybeans, you have alfalfa fields around, hay fields. Those are not susceptible crops to enlist. So for instance, if I'm spraying enlist one in a field and I got a soybean field downwind, I don't need to know what trait that is, what kind of soybean it is, because it's not considered susceptible. So, so as long as I'm on label, with water gallonage, the right nozzles, wind speed, as long as I'm on label, I can spray right to the edge of a soybean field because they are not susceptible. So that makes, uh, that's quite a difference. That's one of the key differences between dicamba and Enlist that growers really like, applicators really like. Because with dicamba, they gotta find out what beans are downwind. And if they're spraying a dicamba herbicide on extend beans, if you have an E3 bean or a Liberty bean downwind, then they can't spray that day. They have to treat it like we would treat grapes or vineyard. So uh, that's interesting. So what we're doing in this plot today is this is a split. I'm standing between two, two different traded soybeans here. All right, so all the soybeans this way are E3 soybeans. All the soybeans this way are extend soybeans with the dicamba trade. So what we did is we sprayed enlist on both kinds of beans we also sprayed dicamba on both kinds of beans. What we're trying to show is we're trying to show either off-target movement or the lack of off-target movement by using those herbicides on the different traits. So we're gonna start over here first. We're gonna meander over here. So what we have here is I'm standing in the block where we sprayed, these are extend beans. We sprayed a 1x rate of, of Enlist on these extend beans. So we use Enlist 1 plus Durango. And what we wanna show here is where we stop spraying, there's a sharp line 
you're not seeing any off target movement of the 24D because these are not E3 beans, so you're not seeing any movement. We had a seven mile an hour wind that day. The wind was blowing out of the west to the east. And you can see the sharp line here where we sprayed the enlist. You got soybeans that died, but right next to it, the next beans over, you're not seeing any 24D symptomology, any of the strapping, any of the alligators back, you're seeing none of that downwind. So we had a seven mile an hour wind. I've done these plots for many years. Uh, last year the wind was 12 miles an hour, still a straight line. It's a very sharp line. And that's why soybeans that are not E3 are not considered susceptible. Because if you use it according to label and properly, uh, you get a sharp line and it just isn't gonna affect beans, soybeans downwind. So what we have here is we have E3 soybeans sprayed with Ingenia. So we had a dicamba sprayed on E3 beans. As you know, Extend beans do not have 2,4-D tolerance. E3 beans do not have dicamba tolerance. There's no cross tolerance. But we sprayed this. Wind was out of the west at seven miles an hour. And you can tell because where we have this, remember on the 2,4-D, we had that sharp line where it just, you know, the symptomology just stopped. If you go over here, you can see we're getting some symptomology of dicamba. And the dicamba symptomology it's taken out quite a ways. You can see it way to the end on some of these rows. And again, that low rate of, two, of dicamba symptomology has got a lot of stuff we saw earlier in the tour. We got the blunt tips and some yellowing at the end. That's very low rates of dicamba. Sometimes can be confused with 240. So this is a low rate of dicamba injury on the soybeans. And we don't have that sharp edge like we did when we spray and list. And that's why with the dicamba herbicides, non-extend beans are considered susceptible. So you can't spray when there's other beans downwind. But with enlist, that's not an issue. And we could spray uh, with soybeans surrounding the field, not have to worry about what traits they're carrying.